Sometimes it takes years to become an overnight success. Today we're going to be talking about stress-free day trading or making your day trading as stress-free as possible. So one of the questions I got yesterday uh, from quite a few traders was, can you talk more about low-hanging fruit? And low-hanging fruit trades uh, day one, day two are just trade setups that I've learned from other traders uh, overseas and then just applied that to the instruments that I'm trading and looking for the best setups. Having a bias, we talked last week about looking at the closing price, who's trapped. Uh, yesterday we looked at a day one setup on a strongly uh, trending pair from a Friday. And then uh, looking at the behavior at the beginning of this session to determine which of those pairs that may be on my watch list were best trade candidates for the setups for the trades for that session. And then whether or not that was a size trade or just a scalp or a nail and bail or get in, get out sort of trade setup. So number one, the, the, the easiest thing for any trader to look for is the path of least resistance or low hanging fruit. So low hanging fruit could be uh, considered to be an easy target and meaning that they are traders maybe who have gotten into the market even in the previous day, previous session, uh, there, for example, they could be all longs and the market has got longs ready to be trapped and roll over and that market could end up going vertically at the open of a session or after the first hour of a session for an explosive stop hunt breakout type trade setup or a continuation. And we'll look at some examples of those. We'll talk about that a bit more in a, in a second. So I keep harping on best trade setups. Now, I know there's traders out there who want to know what are my best trade setups, and I, I go over these, but, but pump and dump. Everything's pump and dump, essentially. You've got your trend trades and your pump and dumps for reversals. You can have pump and, pump and dumps for trend continuations. You can have pump and dumps for, trend, for trade reversals. So what, what I keep suggesting to traders is to go back and print your charts off, but understand the timing, the high and the low of the day, the gap times, uh, you know, essentially stepping back and trading less until you really understand what it is that you're looking for. And, you know, as time goes on, it becomes an easier and easier process each day to just filter out, you know, the, the thesis that I have. And in live time, then being able to be patient and execute that. And I talk about time compression. So that to me is the rotation of time. It takes 30 to 45 minutes often for a market to set up once the session opens if you're not already in a move. And that essentially on a 15-minute chart is like a one, two, three. And little things like that that become second nature. But I, you know, I, I emphasize to people they want to see it live and everything else. Every setup's going to be different and, and you need to be able to do it live. Me showing you live is going to still leave a thousand questions for the next day. And I keep going over the same basic steps. It's about the process when you know what you're looking for each and every day. So having a best trade setup playbook. Number three, preparation. So each session before you even go in, you should have a watch list. If you're just focusing on one or two instruments, you better have already prepared your levels. If you're looking for shorts, longs or it's not setting up at all on that particular instrument or, or on some of the instruments you're following in which case I would suggest shut it down and do nothing then is the trade itself is it just a session scalp is it potentially going to be a larger move maybe a level three or a breakout trade uh, little things like that so if I get into this should I leave a trailer because this could keep going is the initial trade going to be a scalp and there could be a second follow through because it's a breakout pullback? Uh, all of these little things that you have to uh, continuously be monitoring each and every day. And we talk about timings, levels, major round numbers, engulfments, pin hammers, high and low of the day. Uh, you know, that's in all of the other videos. There's over a thousand videos and I'm pretty sure I talk about that in almost every single video. So again, is it a get in, get out, or is it a hold for a larger move? And then understanding that it's okay to be wrong. It's not okay to be wrong and walk away and do nothing. 
Uh, if you're wrong, figure out why you were wrong. And we talked about this yesterday and in several other videos, having an actionable review process. And what I mean by that is it's one thing to have a review process and have a journal and put all your stuff in trading view and trader view and different things. But if you don't have an actual process to review the outcome, the actual the actual PL outcome and performance outcome, so you can still be profitable on a trade and, and have done everything wrong, broken all your rules and still come out profitable, which is a recipe for disaster because at some point that will catch up with you and it'll blow your account out because uh, the bad behavior will catch up with you. But an actionable, actionable review process is where you deconstruct everything about what happened in live time. You know, what did you do well? Did you have a plan prior to getting into the market? Did the market follow through with what your uh, preparation thought might happen? And then how did you act upon that in live time? So people back test, they do all these things. They want to know what your your back testing results, your your you know, your live results, all that are thinking that 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 those results are gonna dictate what they get. But but when it comes to being at the screen live, they will do everything opposite or they will do everything but follow through on what they said they're supposed to do when they prepared and everything in the quiet time. When the war starts and the markets are opening, they're gonna be banging price right into the level where you're supposed to be taking a position in the opposite direction, uh, which could be a trend trade, it could be a reversal trade, but they're going to bang it again. And you might have got in earlier, your first position's underwater and you're adding to that. You've got some different levels for scaling in and they bang it again. And you're starting to get nervous and you, you, you can't handle the heat and you think you're wrong. So you close everything out with a small loss only to watch the trade march away without you seven, eight minutes later, 15 minutes later, and and it was the second possibility that it could be a measured move and it moves 100 pips in the original direction that you were going to trade, but you got out because you were scared. So these are the scenarios that I'm sure all of you have already been through and maybe continuing to go through. F uh, pain, frustration, greed, fear, hope, all of these things that will affect your thought process and your your live performance and you know I, I talk about scaling right down to next to nothing or using your dummy account use I like to use real money even if it's just a micro lot when I'm you know if I'm really struggling or if I've blown out an account I go back to basics and I and I just I think I'm just gonna bang this one perfect trade out I'm gonna do this perfect sometimes you you look at some of your past recent trades and you'll say geez I really didn't execute as perfectly as I would have liked you know I scaled in I did everything kind of right over the course of the entire trade but I might have got in early on one part um, you know I s just maybe got out too soon on some of it and didn't hold for the larger move whatever that may be but it's a game of constant progress you never reach perfection and that's the challenge with trading. It's the beautiful thing is that you can constantly get better. The rewards are always going to be there, uh, but it is okay to be wrong. If you can't be wrong, you can't admit to being wrong. If you can't improve, then the cycle will repeat. And most likely, if you've been blowing out accounts or if you've done damage to your trading account, the cycle will continue. So basically, the low-hanging fruit is two types of trades that, that I've learned and continue to try and improve upon. The first one is, like we talked about with day one, Friday night I'll look for something that closed really heavily right into the end of the day. It might be an up day, it might be a down day. I am I am self-admittedly biased to the short side. I like that, so I tend to look for continuations in a strongly moving market to the short side. The trades are the same to the long side. I just tend to, to seem to be able to short better than I go long. So that's the type one. That would be a trend continuation after a pump and dump setup, possibly. So pump and dump would be where, for example, if I'm going short, I plan on going short, the market will pump up pre-market or into the opening of the market only to give us a rollover and continue back into the direction of the original trend. The second scenario is that we may see a strong move into the close of a trending day. It may only be one day. Or it could be a day two, but we'll see a strong close, and immediately the next day we see a reversal 
And the reason is, is that, for example, if it's a down day, uh, shorts are in the market, bang, they have shorts underwater right off the bat. They may consolidate and continue that move into the next session for an explosive move back to the entire distance of the other day because they have shorts trapped for the entire day or longs in, in that what either particular case. We'll look at some examples of that. But these are just two examples of uh, high probability opportunity. So I didn't uh, mention this. I will right now. These are probability setups that I have you know, worked on myself and many traders have seen them before. They're not my work. There's nothing new in the market. Anybody who tells you that they've thought of this or they've named this concept or they were blessed with being this, told this information, these things have been happening for since the beginning of markets. So if somebody starts telling you that, I'd run the other way. Uh, if they're not humble enough to admit that uh, they're just a student of the market like the rest of us, then I'd head the other way. They're probably trying to sell you something. So, but probability, po possibility. Bill McLaren, one of my mentors, said this over and over to me. Possibility. There are possibilities. And so if you approach the trade with that in mind, you know, like Mark Douglas said, anything is possible. Uh, you will manage your risk accordingly, not go all in. Uh, but we're looking, or I'm looking for a broken down market or a market where they have one side trapped and they can't get out. And that's the setups that I'm looking for because when they have traders trapped, they're going to go fast and furious to hit their stops and potentially put a lot of pain into them. And that same conti trend continuation trade can be the same thing from somewhere on the left of the chart where traders are in institutional positions. It may be a session. Uh, Monday, uh, sorry, Asia, London, down the U.S. session up to the entire range of the day. Or it may be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday reversal. Uh, it could be a Friday all-in day and a Monday reversal, those sorts of scenarios. We'll take a look at some of those right now. This is a, a great two-day example of a low-hanging fruit setup. Two days in a row we have, um, I'll just put Monday separator up here. Friday, Monday, we had Friday uh, into the close, I'm not going to put colors or levels or anything on in, in today. I just want the traders to get the concept. This is Friday. We had longs pumped up into the end of the night. They got traders who were short at the London session. And they hit the stops. But we got traders caught long. And immediately on the Monday morning, we have a vertical move straight down into the higher level longs. This forms our Batman formation. If you're not familiar with that, you can Google it. forms a Batman head. And from that point on, my bias is to the downside in this session because, or in the day, because we know longs are in the market and they're caught up high. I talked about closing price. Somebody bought that somewhere in the closing area up on the green line and immediately these upper level longs were trapped right at, at the start of the day. The market proceeds to put a lower high in the beginning of Asia. And then we pull up one, two, three into that lower high at the Europe open. And again, looking for low hanging fruit, we've got longs trapped. These longs are in the market still. The market stays sideways before breaking out in the London session. We talk about three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they continue. They break out, they pull back, and they reverse. And they break out, pull back, or they just trade back and forth inside the high and low in a trading range, which essentially this is what this is. But we break out, we hit the low of the day on the trapped longs, so Friday closes up high on the day, even though it's a down day, it closes up high. U.S. session is one push, two pushes, one, two, three into the close. We get our Batman. The market breaks out in London and pulls back. There was a low-hanging fruit right at the beginning of the U.S. session, uh, which we'll go into more detail later. That's on a smaller time frame. But all that was was a stop hunt up into the first half hour of the U.S. session for a reversal right back down to the low of the day, low-hanging fruit on a smaller time frame. 
So this is an example of, of a reversal trade on traders who are trapped long. The market immediately locks it in at the beginning of the week and beginning of the day, trades sideways, trades up high into the rectangle before breaking out, pulling back, hitting stops, clearing out the, the longs that were trapped, and continuing the downward move. Now this is an example of a trend continuation. Now what I look for in the trend continuation, as I talked about yesterday, is a market that potentially has locked in lower highs or higher lows if we're going in the long direction. Uh, and again, on a smaller time frame, I'll zoom right in on the one minute. We have a peak formation at double zeros in late in the U.S. session. Peak formation above 50. Immediately I will put a horizontal line at 50 into the new day. We have a peak formation above 50. We have a pin down low for our low of the day, but we have longs suspended up in the air. Suspended up in the air. What that means is that when I can see a space below double zeros, we had a pin down here, they went up long, this trader's trapped. When we have longs or shorts suspended and there's, there's a space, to me, this is a low-hanging fruit trade setup before I even look at what happens the next day. Because whenever these levels, again, you'll notice the peak formations are above the numbers here. They're suspended above the numbers for the move through that level. So when we zoom in, I looked for the pump and dump. Right off the bat, we see that. We, we've got our M formation locking in 50. Higher level longs, they trigger the low and pump it up. Now, I don't know, this could be breaking out and going longer, except that when we get into our second hour, they trade through the high of the first hour, engulf it, and pull back. There's our M formation at the high of the day inside of the peak formation at 50. Thesis is now that we could get a breakout or a stop hunt down to the previous day's low and possibly a breakout trade. Now, this is an early entry if you're in early before the session starts. But we're going to get more in depth in this in some coming videos. Gold obviously has bigger ranges than some of the major pairs, but we'll look at a couple of major pairs. The market will, in the first hour, put in a high, put in a low, put both in, but that's what allows us to continue our thesis. If we're already in this trade and we're out with profits, the market then proceeds to auction back up, breakout, pullback. Okay, puts in a high and then goes back up to that high 45 minutes into the session. So again, I talk about a one, two, three. One, two, same thing. The third bar down, burst through again. These are all the same setups. Um, but we again, with the pump and dumps, we're going to talk about those in the coming videos. This first break in structure headed back towards the low of the day puts in a low, and this is a key. We'll talk about this with London session setups. This higher low is important because that signifies a bull candle on the longer time frame, which is our, our second push to the high, trapped traders. They come back up inside the original breakout short. They engulf and resume the move down. So path of least resistance, the market was already broken down. We saw the pump up first before the market opened. We talked about this yesterday on the Aussie dollar. We had the strong close on the Friday night and then the pump up just before the session started on the Aussie dollar. One, two, three up. The engulfment pin hammer was a little triple top on the smaller time frame for the easy follow through trade selling at the high of the day. And that market ended up going down over 100 pips from top to bottom. So again, an example of where that first hour went up and put a high in place before breaking structure. Second hour opens, goes back up into the high and gives us our M formation up into the high engulfment pin hammer for the continuation move down. First move, first trade breaks structure if you're not already in earlier. And then the second move follows through for the measured move in the original direction of the trend. Yesterday, the Euro Yen was a great example of a Second day, day one, low-hanging fruit setup. Friday closed, uh, went into the close with shorts closing out the U.S. session. 
right into the low of the the almost the low of the day into the session. But right off the bat, we get a vertical move of 50 pips, and that if we just horizontally draw a line underneath of those bodies and that pullback, we can see that shorts, all these lower level shorts are trapped. That's a dead giveaway. We may have a continuation. If we just dial this chart up, we can see this market was in a longer term uptrend. And when we come back to this, a really important aspect to notice is that they did not push higher and take out any highs. They went sideways into consolidation. This sideways movement into consolidation is a compression pattern building up, building up, building up, building up. When they do not take out a high or a low and they coil sideways inside of those peak formations, when this market does reverse or does continue to move, it will explode. Now we see the first hour breakout pullback first can candle of London open back into the first pin hammer and then our engulfment pin hammer second candle this is a 15 minute chart for the continuation entry so we had shorts trapped right into the low into the close immediately the next day opens up we're on a, a, a medium term trend line for rising lows they engulf pre-market right away pump 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 three pushes up and go into consolidation so that being different than pump 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 and reversing they go into consolidation they're not going to reverse because they got shorts trapped in the market they're not going to let them out if they let if they come back down they allow them to get out with a small loss or even possibly break even or whatever but they went sideways inside of the highs inside of the highs good indication that when this market breaks it may continue to to have a sustained move. There's a lot of built up energy in this um, coil. So again, an example of a trend trade where shorts were trapped into the close, bang, right away, beginning of the next day. I talked about paying attention to the close. They go vertical 50 pips right off the bat pre-market and then they go sideways. So my thesis into the Europe session would definitely be that I'm gonna hold this for a long trade. Day one, a day one, continuation low-hanging fruit trade and we can see day two a very similar setup for a continuation trade so we can call these trend trades the difference being is that when traders chase a move into the higher into the low they can get smashed at that last extreme so the difference with low-hanging fruit we want to see traders trapped and then pre-market some evidence of these traders being underwater the market moves up just before the market opens, breakout pullback, we get our continuation hammer for 25 to 35 pips or more into the high of the day. Again, they did not take out the high. If they get you going long into the high, that's where you can get trapped. They stayed sideways. They put our W formation in, a low of the day possibly in, at least for the session. We have an ascending triangle out of that W formation, a middle structure, that they've traded sideways on top of. So breakout pullback, our little W in the middle. Continuation for that low hanging fruit where shorts were caught into the end of the session for the explosive move back through the high. This is an example yesterday of a session low hanging fruit trade. So similar to the Aussie dollar, we see the euro closed into the low of the day on a very strong downward day. This is a day two down. Immediately we see the market go up as we just saw in the euro yen. They coil sideways though and continue back down towards the low. They come back down to the low, one push, two pushes, three pushes and go vertical on the lower level shorts into the open of the Europe session. We have shorts trapped from Friday night. They've come back down into the low, the previous day's low without trading through it. We get a breakout pullback, the first hour pushes higher and then we get our pattern again, which people keep asking me, what do you mean by one, two, three? One, two, three bars into the original breakout, into the low. That's a stop on pattern. It can come in many forms. It can be a peak formation. Whenever you see three candles in a row on any time frame, be prepared for a possible imminent move. It can be a blow off through the low. It can be an explosive reversal trade. We get our Second candle of the London Open, so the first 15 minutes, false move into the low, jamming traders into the low, looking to continue the short trade. 
engulfment uh, on the second candle. So that's an open test rejection on market profile for a 50 pip move straight up into the lower level shorts. So again, an example of where they've already locked in the low. They've already locked in the low. They trade back into the low. They break out, they trade back into that low again for the explosive move back through not only the high of the day, but into the lower level shorts. We're coming off of double zeros. All these little things, they jam traders back into the low of the day, into the low of the week for the explosive move back to the high of the day. So hopefully you got value from today's video traders. Look for low hanging fruit setups. So if you were short up here and you're holding on for more, you're into the gap time. So time compression. I'm holding on to a trade. It gets to the level. I'm out of the trade. If I'm still holding on to this and we get a second, third push an hour later and it hasn't gone further than 25 pips, I'm closing the trade out because now we're in the gap time and this is when you're going to see other things happen. So I'm looking for trades to be done and dusted. I might be in the trade longer over the course of the hour or whatever, but I want to be in profits and I'm locking it in. If you're holding on to stuff and it starts behaving like this, you're the trader that's going to get smashed. So keep it simple. Trade in the path of least resistance. Again, stick to your rules. Have a great trading session. Start the, start the day right. We've had a good day yesterday already. Let's keep it going. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.